Alright guys, hello and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. Uh, I'd like to start off by just apologising that I didn't get many videos out last week, or any videos out last week, sorry. Uh, it was just the Christmas period, had me totally pushed down, really, really busy trying to get presents, you know, that sort of thing. And then uh, Tutorial Tuesday actually fell on Christmas Day as well, and I had nothing prepared, so I couldn't just click upload, and there was, like I didn't have any time on Christmas Day to to get on and make a video on Christmas, so... I'm sorry for that, I have tried to make up for it by doing a speed art Sunday yesterday, which was on Friday, so you know it didn't really make sense, and tutorial Tuesday today, which is Saturday. So I know they're off schedule and late, but I am trying to get them out for you. Um, the second thing I'd like to say just before we get this started is I got a new microphone. On top of other things, I did, like, for Christmas I got some money, and I did just say to the people who gave me the money, I said, look, I know the best thing to do is probably to shove all this in a savings account for university, buying a car, buying a house, that sort of thing, because I'm getting at that age. Um, but I decided, and I did say to them, I was honest up front, I said, look, I, for a while I've wanted to buy these things. Um, I've never had the money to do it. I've never had a lump sum because I'm terrible with money. If I get, like, if someone gives me £10, um, which in America is like, what, $15 or something like that, but if someone gives me like £10, I won't put it in a tin or put it in a box somewhere and save it and keep saving up these £10 and then go out and buy the big thing that I want to buy. I won't do that. I'll just I'll just spend it like on sweets or food or anything, just anything. Um, so yeah, anyway, dragging it out here. This is my new mic. I have, I have, I have, oh yeah, I have. I have. <laughs> use the Queen's English. I have, um, I, I don't even know what I was going to say now. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I did record myself opening it um, and sort of talked over it at the same time, that sort of thing. So I did do an unboxing video. Uh, whether I upload that or not, it's a different story. I don't know how the quality will be. Um, I, I don't I don't know, I didn't really know what I was doing that much, so it's a bit slapdash. But I might just upload it anyway, just for your guys' benefit. It is quite long. Anyway, that's besides the point. Let's get into this. This is Tutorial Tuesday. Today, we're going to be doing another text technique. Now, a lot of people were asking for this. Um, 3D text. Now, as you notice, I don't have the add-on for Photoshop, which is like, there would be another tab up here saying 3D, and that makes everything really easy. Now, I know a lot of people don't have that and have to create their own 3D text like I do every time. And to be honest, it does look good. So we'll start off. By, I've just got a plain white background here and I'll start off by just grabbing the text um, I'll type something in I'll just type in hamster again so I do that every time um, and the text we will have to be honest Ariel isn't even that bad but I think I'm gonna go with um, hmm I might just go with impact yeah, I'll go with impact. Right, so I'm using the impact font now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the size of this just so we can see what I'm doing. Uh, this is a very, very big document, so everything is very big. Right, now what we want to do is we want to hold control and click. Right, make sure you've got it selected. Sorry, that's a good start. Make sure you've got it all selected. Hold control and click J. And what that does is it makes a copy. Now once you've got the copy, use the arrow keys to adjust the position of it. Now you want to adjust it, what, like use the arrow keys, click up once, and click right once. Then control J again, up and right, control J, up and right, control J, up and right, control J, up and right. And keep going, it, it will differ on yours, but you'll notice here now that the point of the S has intercepted the curve of the S. So the shape's starting to intercept itself. Now I don't want to do that very much. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that. If I do any more, like the little hole in the A will start intercepting as well and the hole will disappear. The same with the R, just things will start messing up. Anyway, um, it won't look too bad once you put the After Effects on, which I'll show you. I'm just gonna do one more actually, just to show you. There you go. Right, so that is it now. Now the very last copy that you made, so for me it was, this was the original, then I did all these copies, and the very last copy I did 
was this one here, hamster copy seven. That is your top one, okay? It, so it seems weird, it confused me at first, but that is your top one. So you wanna double click that or right click on it and go up to blending options. And it will open this for you. I'll just drag this down here a little bit. Um, now, this is where you can be really creative and really inventive. With the last text that you did, you kind of had to follow what I was doing and change a couple of things like colors. This time, you really can just do whatever you feel is best. Uh, I'm going to start with the gradient overlay like I do every time. Don't mess around with any of this. Leave all of this the same, but all you want to be doing is changing the color. Just change the color. You want the dark bit to be on the bottom and the light bit to be on the top. Now, I'm going to have this text. Uh, I'll stick with blue again because everything I'm doing these days seems to be blue, so it would seem odd to change now. You want the bottom bit, as last time, you want the bottom bit to be very dark and the top bit to be very light, like so. And you can already see now how we've made that text 3D. So it already looks pretty, pretty beast, if I'm honest. So just go back onto that because we're not finished changing things. Now you can put a drop a drop shadow on, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's gonna have the appearance that it's hovering. The appearance, the appearance that it's hovering. So you don't really want that. Um, you can do an outer glow, but again, I wouldn't really suggest it. I would do an inner shadow. Uh, increase the choke a little bit and the size a little bit. You don't want it too much. It is nice to have that sort of border. Um, now speaking of border. I sometimes like to put a stroke on it. So click stroke, change the position to inside so that it's on the inside, not on the outside, and it doesn't look like it's floating around. Um, I just like to drop in here that this text does look good in like cartoony type things rather than the last one, which is good for like grungy things. So this is good for like more cartoony things. You can do a bevel and emboss, but to me, I don't know, I just. I'm not a big fan of it to be honest I think it makes it look a little bit silly so I'm going to stick with this because it already has that depth to it it already looks like it dips in a little bit um, what you can do on the stroke is decrease the size of it so if you don't like the look of it you can just make it 2 pixels or even 1 pixel I'm going to have 2 pixels and that's me done for the first layer now what you want to do is with all the other copies and the original you want to highlight them all and group them all together. So hold control and click every single one of them. Now if you've got loads, what you can do is just click the very top one, then hold shift and click the very bottom one. And what that'll do is highlight them all. Now right click, go rasterize type, then right click them again and go merge layers. So now they're two separate things. You might want to change the name of them just to like call that one top and call that one the back or something like that just so you know what you're dealing with but you should manage anyway then open this window again so either double click it or right click blending options now this is where you need to be quite clever about this you want to do gradient overlay again but you want the back layer because that's going to be in the shadows if you like imagine there was a light where you're sat where you're sitting on your computer chair you're shining a light at the screen imagine that so the bits at the back are going to be darker than the bits at the front because the bits at the front are getting all the light so you want to probably keep with the same color scheme now you can change it you can just make the back bit i'll show you now uh, sorry i'm getting a phone call so i'm going to chuck my phone away so you're not getting interference um you can make the back bit like black and grey that looks alright doesn't it you've got to agree that looks alright but I like to stick with the colour scheme so I want to stick with the blues that we have now this is going to be almost a blast blue on, on YouTube because when it renders out it looks darker and stuff the video so when you're watching that's probably going to look black uh, but it's not it's just a really dark navy blue and then the top bit again to be a very dark black not black blue very dark blue and you can see there that that is looking very, very nice. I want to stick a drop shadow on it. Like I was saying before, get a drop shadow on. Increase the size just so that it, it gives it that bit of background, you know. There you go. Uh, now, I like to stick an outer glow on sometimes, depending on what it is I'm doing. Uh, and I like to, again, stick with the color that I'm using for the 
with the actual um, text. So if I have a nice light blue there and just increase the size of it a tiny little bit, change the blend mode to normal, increase the size a little, and there you go. It gives it a sort of just a, a small glimmer. You know, it's not stupid. It just gives it a little glimmer. Uh, again, in a shadows, they can. Oh, that's in a glow. Sorry, in a shadow, they can look good. It's not going to matter too much because I've already got a really dark text anyway. And that is about all I would suggest doing. Stroke doesn't really look that good on it. I wouldn't suggest it. Um, so you can use it, but I'm not like I'm not too keen on it. So I'm not going to bother with a stroke. Uh, but that is literally it, guys. That is how you do it. Now, to just merge these together, do the same thing again. Highlight them both, holding control. Go rasterize type and merge layers. And there you go, they're now one solid object. And you can do whatever you want with that, guys. So very, very simple, very easy to do. I hope that makes up for missing out Tutorial Tuesday last week. Um, and I hope this helps you. So if it did help you, please leave a like. Um, I will see you guys in the next episodes. Goodbye. Oh, and by the way, I won't have a speed art Sunday tomorrow because, um, unfortunately, because of, like like I said, I was very busy, I didn't have time to do the competition and I didn't have time to, like, not advertise myself, but to, like, ask anyone if they wanted to buy one, that sort of thing. So no one, like, I haven't had to make a background or anything for anyone. So I don't have anything to show you for tomorrow's speed art Sunday. But again, I will make up for it later on in the week. And before long, we will get back onto our normal schedule as normal. So I'm very sorry about that. Hope you enjoyed this. I will see you in probably the unboxing video that I upload. See you next time. Goodbye.